is unconditional basic income the key to alleviating Europe's crippling unemployment, or some misdirected socialist macroeconomics that could result in a work-shy population who will in effect be paid to stay at home? With me now is Barbara Jacobson, one of the organisers of the European Citizens Initiative for Unconditional Basic Income. Well, Barbara, a basic income paid to everyone, that's the theory, but what exactly is this and who will benefit? Well, we hope everyone will benefit from it, actually. The main concern is, is the people who are very poor at the moment in, in Europe and the way that the economies in Europe have been going down very quickly. Uh, we feel that basic income would support demand and also be a fairer way of allocating money in the, within the economy. Uh, the other thing it will do is uh, also simplify the benefit system dramatically. Well, is this just the benefit system repackaged? No, we hope that it will be liberating for everyone. First of all, of course, um, small businesses depend a lot on a lot of unpaid work, both by the people, the entrepreneurs themselves, and usually their families and friends, or with the aging population. We need some kind of support system for people to be able to look after their relatives. It's not that we're against the services that are available, but um, it would be many families would rather look after their, their elderly, you know, in their homes. And at the moment, if they do that, then they, then they risk um, becoming very poor themselves. So how do you expect this to be funded? The Citizens Income Trust reckons that it could pay a £10,000 income for everybody. There's also an increasing divergence on the, dif the difference between sort of tax, tax on, on uh, people who are earning versus tax on people who, on, on income which is unearned, say for example, rents or um, share, you know, dividends, um, a financial speculation tax, that sort of thing, which would actually increase the amount of money significantly. Well, critics might argue that this sounds frankly socialist, if you like, and won't this deter people from full-time employment? The pilot studies around the world say no. There was a very interesting experiment in Canada called the Mincome, uh, which was uh, done in the for a few, about four years in the 1970s, which showed that actually the only people who really stopped working were young mothers of, of small children before school, um, teenagers uh, who were trying to get into college and or who were studying, and, um, and people who were close to the age of retirement anyway. Well, do you think there could be obviously a question of culture there? Because obviously maybe in Canada people are more sort of wanting to work, whereas if you go somewhere else maybe they'll be more work shy? I think what people have to understand about most means-tested benefit systems is that they are actually the, um, the cause of, of people being so-called work shy. Um, it's if you if you work on top of benefits like if say if you're in the tax credit system or if you if you claim housing benefit in this country the effective tax rate is is 85 percent which is a huge disincentive to work if we had a citizens or a basic income people would be able to keep the income that they that they get from that um, they would be taxed on the income which which they earn on top of that and we just feel that would be a much fairer system. Well, if this did come into practice, obviously, what would you think would happen in terms of people entering the country? Would they also be eligible for the same unconditional basic income? What we're saying is that anybody who is um, eligible for, for child benefits, so that's anyone who has the right to remain in this, in this country. Um, we also feel that if it were a, a European initiative, if it were European-wide, I think that would mean that a lot of people wouldn't have to move in order to feed their children. Well, not to ask the awkward questions, but what do you think would happen to sort of unskilled jobs then that really rely on low wages? Because if they're getting an unconditional basic income, then obviously perhaps they'd be less likely to do these sort of jobs. Or, or they would be demanding higher wages. I mean, it's, it's a very strange thing at the moment that, that um, work seems to be remunerated uh, in an inverse proportion to their social usefulness. Say, for example, if all the nurses went on strike tomorrow, there would be a disaster. If all the bankers went on strike, we would notice. Well, assuming we do give everyone money, surely this will have severe inflation implications. Well, considering how indebted the economy is at the moment, I, I don't think that's, that's too much of a problem. There would be a lot of people who would be paying down their debts with this, probably. In effect, it's really a fiscal stimulus, and wouldn't it be better to just invest in a policy that supports long-term economic approach that creates jobs? Well, we feel this would create jobs because people would be employing themselves um, or they would, or they, you know, they could pool their, their citizens or basic income 
um, to to set up pro you know community projects or or even business projects in their area. How do you think this will impact the British economy if it did come into practice? Realistically, the more money you give to poorer people, the more they actually proportionally spend into the economy. That's what some people seem to forget. You know, as as sort of money seems to be trickling up as opposed to as to, as opposed to trickling down in poor areas when people are spending money that's where the multiplier effect is that's where um, uh, the the pound every pound is spent actually creates another five or six pounds within that local economy what we would hope is that in very hard pressed areas like the north people would be able to stay there as opposed to coming down to london um, and and rebuild their own economies there barbara thank you thank you very much